In this question, we have to find the Boolean expression for the function that will results output 0 when a is equal to b is equal to c and a equal to b but not equals to c. Let us first find the truth table for this. Whenever a is equal to b is equal to c, then output should be 0. In the similar fashion, when a is equal to b is equal to c, it should be 0. And whenever a is equal to b but not equals to c, it again results in 0. In these two cases, a is equal to b and a is equal to b. Here, it's not equal to c, so that's why it's 1. And again, in these cases, is a is, a is not equals to b, so it results in 1. Again here, a is not equals to b, so it's 1. A is equal to B but not equals to C. So it's again results in 0. Now drawing the K map for the resulting function. Now simplifying this using the K map, we get f it's nothing but a bar b plus a b bar, which is nothing but a x or b. So it's option D. Here, for the synchronous circuit, we have to find the modulus of the counter. So let us take initially the values of T1 for this. T1 is nothing but Q1 odd with Q0, whereas T for T0, the input is Q1 bar. As they have mentioned in the question, the initial state of the counter is 0, 0. So input for T1 is Q1 or with Q0, which is nothing but 0 or with 0, it's 0. And for T0, it's Q1 bar, which is nothing but 1. Now, if we apply the clock pulse, the Q1, next state of Q1 is 0, and Q0 is 0. Sorry, it's 1. Now. The input for T1 is 0 or with 1, it's 1, and T0 is Q1 bar, which is nothing but 1. Now, if we apply the clock pulse, as the input for the T flip-flop is 1, it will be the negation of previous state. So it's 1, 
and it's zero. Now again finding the inputs, one or with zero, it's one, and negation of one is zero. Now again if we apply the clock pulse, input for t1 is one, so it will be the next state will be the complement of the previous state, and the input for t0 is zero, it will be zero. So initial as initially the value of q1 and q0 are zero, so the pattern will repeat again and again. So modulus of this counter is three. The states are zero one, one zero, and zero zero. So modulus of this counter is three. Here, after execution of this set of instructions, we have to find the contents in 5000 and 6000 memory locations. Let us see step by step of these instructions. Initially, XR A with A, so accumulator will be 0, 0. Now, we have to load accumulator with the contents in 5000 H location. The contents in 5000 H location is 25 H. So it is, A is loaded with 25 H. Now, this instruction says that move contents of A to B. Now, B register will have the contents of 25 H as well. A will be 25 H. Now, the fourth instruction says that load accumulator with contents in 6000 memory location. The contents in 6000 memory location initially is FFH. So accumulator in this instruction is getting loaded with FFH. Now this instruction says that store whatever the contents in accumulator in 5000 location. The previous instruction, after the execution of previous instruction, accumulator has FF. So after execution of this instruction, accumulator will be having FF. Store accumulator, whatever the contents are there in accumulator in 5000 location. So 5000 location now will have FFH. Now, again, move contents of B into accumulator. The contents of B is 25H after the execution of this instruction. 
So A will be loaded with 25H. Again, this instruction says that store whatever the contents are there in accumulator into 6000 memory location. So A has 25H. So in the memory location of 6000, 25H will be loaded. So after executing this set of instructions, our 5000 location has FFH and 6000 location has 25H. So it's option A. Here they have provided us 8-bit DAC that produces 1 volt for this digital input. We know that decimal equivalent into step size gives us analog voltage. The decimal equivalent of this given digital input is 50 into step size gives us 1 volt. So each step represents 1 by 50 volts. Now here he is asking for largest value of output voltage that we get from 8-bit DAC. For 8-bit DAC, the largest output will be obtained for all ones. So again applying this formula, decimal equivalent of this decimal equivalent of this digital input is 255 and from the given data we obtain the step size as 1 by 50. It is our analog voltage. On these calculations we get it as 5.1 volts. So it's option D. Here, he has given us 8-bit DAC and he also provided us full-scale output of 2 milliamperes. Full-scale output of 8-bit DAC will be obtained whenever all the bits are ones. Again, utilizing the formula of decimal equivalent of given input digital input into step size gives us analog output. Now, decimal equivalent of this of this uh, of this input digital input is nothing but 255 into step size gives us maximum full scale output is 2 milliamperes so analog output is 2 milliamperes therefore step size is 2 milliamperes by 255 now He is asking for range of possible outputs for an input of 100000. He is asking for range of possible outputs. Now again applying this formula for this digital input, we get decimal equivalent of this 
digital input is 128. From these calculations, we have obtained the step size, which is nothing but 2 milliampere by 255 gives our analog output, which turns out to be 1004 micro amperes. So, our output will be 1004 micro amperes, but in the question, they have specified two errors. One is offset error and other is error which is nothing but plus or minus 0.5 percent of full scale. So adding these two errors for our uh, output, first of all adding offset error which is nothing but 20 microamperes, it specified that it is always plus 20 microamperes. Now coming to the second error, it is plus or minus 0.5 percent of full scale. Again, here we have to add plus or minus 0.5 percent of full scale. What is our full scale? It's 2 milliamperes. So, 1024 microamperes plus or minus 0 0.5 by 100 into 2 milliamperes. As we have plus and as well minus, we will get a range of output values, which is nothing but So, our output will be ranging from 1014 microamperes to 1034 microamperes. So, it's option C. In this question, we have to match list 1 with list 2. Let us go in the opposite way. Taking out first multiplexer in list 2, which is specified as selection line is given as x and inputs are 0 and y. Now finding out function that is get implemented with this multiplexer is f is nothing but x bar into 0 plus x into y which is nothing but x y. So this is our first multiplexer which is getting implemented the function of x and y. So list 1 the first multiplexer will be matched to option r. Now let us look at second multiplexer in list 2. The, the selection line as y and first input is x and second input is 1. Let us look at the function that is getting implemented with the help of this multiplexer. The function can be written as y bar into first input x plus y into second input 1, which is nothing but y plus y bar x, which can be written as y odd with x. So the second multiplexer is implementing the function of an OR gate. So it matches with q. Now let us look at the third multiplexer. They have given the selection line as x, first input is y, the second input is y bar. Now let us look what is the function that is getting implemented with the help of this multiplexer. The function can be written as x bar 
into first input that is y plus x into second input that is y bar. This is nothing but x, x or y. So it it is matched to option P. Here, after executing this set of instructions, we have to find the contents in accumulator, provided they have given the content of accumulator initially is 0, 6H. So, this instruction says that rotate the contents of accumulator left without carry, as the initial contents in accumulator is 0, 6H. These are the contents of accumulator initially. Now we have to rotate the contents of this in the leftward fashion without taking carry into consideration. After rotating, we get the contents of accumulator, which is nothing but 0 CH. Now carrying on the second instruction, this instruction says that move the contents of accumulator into B register. Now, B register will be loaded with 0 CH and as well A already will be having 0 CH. Now, again this third instruction says that rotate the contents of accumulator leftwards without carry. Now, the contents of accumulator is 0 CH. Again, we have to rotate the contents of accumulator which is nothing but so this is the contents of accumulator after executing this instruction the equivalent hexadecimal value is 18h after executing third instruction our accumulator contents has 18h now we have to execute this instruction Again, this instruction says, rotate the contents of accumulator left. Which is nothing but hexa. decimal equivalent is 30H. Now we have to add the contents of accumulator to B and then we have to store that again in accumulator. So this instruction says that store the contents into accumulator after adding contents of A and B. Our accumulator will be having 30H and the contents of B is 0 CH. So, we have to add these two contents. And this is the content of accumulator and we have to add contents of B.
Hexadecimal equivalent is 3C H and this says we have to stop the executing the instructions. So after performing this we get the contents of accumulator as 3C H. So it's option D. Here we have to find the frequency at output y. If we can observe clearly, last Q0 bar is given as input to D4. So it represents Johnson counter. So let us represent the states of this counter. And moreover, the initial contents of this are given as 1, 0. 1, 0, 1. So, as Q0 bar is given as input to D4, if we apply the clock pulse, now it will become 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. How does it come? 1 will be negated and given to 0 and this will be transferred in this fashion. This is after the first clock pulse. Now, if we apply the second clock pulse, again Q1, Q0 is 0, so it will be negated and 0 will be transferred here, 1, 0 and 1. Here we have to find frequency at the output y which is nothing but Q0. If we observe clearly, Q0 it is transferring logic 1 to logic 0 for one clock pulse and for the successive clock pulse it is transferring from logic 0 to logic 1. So for the applied clock pulse that is 10 megahertz it is getting divided by 2. So frequency at output y is nothing but 10 megahertz by 2 which is nothing but 5 megahertz which is our required answer. Here they have given a multiplexer and they have asked for a sum of product terms implemented by this multiplexer. So initially whenever the selection lines are 0 and 0, input I0 is selected. Whenever it is 0, 1, I1 is selected and when it is 1, 0, I2 is selected. Whenever it is 1, 1, I3 is selected. Now let us represent it in the mathematical form. Whenever it is 0, 0, that is nothing but A bar, B bar, I0 will be selected, that is nothing but C plus. Whenever AB is 0, 1, that is nothing but A bar, B, I0 will be selected, which is nothing but D bar plus. Whenever it is 1, 0, I2 will be selected, as I2 is 0, so the output will be 0 plus. Whenever select, selection lines are 1 and 1, I3 will be selected. So it will be AB into input is C plus T. This is our function F in terms of ABCD. Now we know that for the first term, 
as they have asked to represent our function in standard of product terms there is no literal d but we can write d added with d bar is 1 so as we can write this term a bar c into d plus d bar plus in this we are we have to include literal c that is nothing but a bar b into c plus c bar into d bar plus the first term is abc so it is abc into d plus d bar the second term is a b d so c literal is missing so we have to include c plus c bar d simplifying this it's a b bar c d plus plus second term it's a bar c plus bar c d bar again the third term nothing but c d s a c d s a b bar. now looking at this expression we see that a b c d and a b c d is added so one a b c d can be redundant so our final expression for f is this it matches with option a so answer is option a